Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today. We're excited to bring you this overview webinar on ETAP solutions for data centers and critical facilities. Data centers can be thought of as the brains of the internet. Their role is to process, store, and communicate the data behind the myriad information services we rely upon every day, whether it be streaming video, email, social media, online collaboration, or simply scientific computing. Data centers utilize different IT devices to provide these services, all of which are powered by electricity. The electricity used by these IT devices is ultimately converted into heat, which must be removed from the data center by pooling equipment that also runs on electricity. On average, the servers and cooling systems account for the greatest share of direct electricity use in data centers followed by storage drives and network devices. Some of the world's largest data centers can each contain many tens of thousands of IT devices and require more than 100 megawatts of power capacity. That is enough to power around 80,000 US households. So let's get started and learn about digital continuity in design and operations that ETAP offers for data centers and mission critical facilities. In our agenda, we will talk about the ETAP solutions, some data center fundamentals, designed to operate as a concept and philosophy, and then how ETAP smart data center solutions goes from design to operations within that kind of segment. So let's start with ETAP solutions. ETAP is a solution for the design, analysis, protection, optimization, commissioning, automation, operation, and maintenance of electrical systems. We accomplish this kind of capability in power generation, transmission, distribution, as well as industrial, transportation, and low voltage or commercial systems. The low voltage systems include data centers as well as mission critical facilities. So let's talk a little bit about our data center fundamentals. There are various types of mission critical facilities such as airports, cloud data centers, telecommunication centers, and network operations. Within these types of facilities, there are enterprise data centers, which are built, owned, and operated by companies and are optimized for their end users. Most often, they're housed on corporate campuses. And then we also have managed services where data centers are managed by third party or managed services provider on behalf of a company. The company therefore leases the equipment and the infrastructure instead of buying it. Then we have co-location data centers or colos where a company rents space within a data center owned by others and located off of the company premises. The co-location data center hosts the infrastructure such as the building, cooling, bandwidth, security, etc. while the company provides and manages the components including servers, storage and firewalls. And then finally we have the cloud data centers which are off-premise form of data centers where data and applications are both hosted by a cloud service provider such as Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, or IBM Cloud and other public service providers. And then when we look at the different sizes of data centers, they can range anywhere from one rack consuming about, about 100 kilowatt plus or minus, or could be about a shipping container size, to a larger data center that may be consuming plus or minus one megawatt. Finally, to a larger size, which could be as big as two football fields that consumes about 10 megawatts. And then the large data centers, which may be the size of Windsor Castle or 12 football fields that consume 50 megawatts. And then finally, we have the hyperscale data centers, which consume more than 100 megawatts. And they are as big as the Vatican City or 57 football fields. The power consumption in the data center, as we mentioned earlier, is primarily the servers and the cooling equipment. So that includes the HVAC units, such as chillers, cooling towers, and other associated devices, as well as the electrical components that include switch gears, breakers, and then of course the building automation system. The key performance indicators in a data center include some of the commonly known power usage efficiency or PUE, data center infrastructure efficiency or DCIE, carbon usage effectiveness or CUE, as well as IT equipment utilization or ITUE. 
some of the common metrics, which are PUE and DCIE, have a range anywhere from 1.2 to 3.0. The green grid benchmark for a very efficient data center, giving it a platinum rating, is a PUE of less than 1.25. Gold is 1.25 to 1.43. Bronze is 1.6 to 2.0. A recognized data center in the green grid benchmark would be 2.0 to 2.5 and a non-recognized or very inefficient data center would be greater than 2.5. These key performance indicators are essentially calculated and available within ETAP, especially when we are in the operation stage. But these are important metrics to keep in mind while designing a data center. The general power distribution in a data center includes a power grid, generators connected through a transfer switch, over to a UPS, and finally to the servers. So in the case of a grid failure, the transfer switch can wait for the generator to start up, transferring the emergency diesel in, while the UPS is providing temporary uninterrupted power to the critical electronic pieces of equipment and charging or discharging the battery based on its power source. So that's the most basic uh, power distribution configuration in a data center, but it gets complicated because data centers include redundancy. And these redundancies include supplying from the main power source, failure of any distribution component, such that, such that we are powering it from a generator, or failure of more than one component at, at the same time. So different data center redundancies are classified, tiered, and are to be analyzed as part of the power system analysis. So the data center redundancy tiers include one, two, three, four, and some data centers boast a tier five configuration, but these are the recognized Uptime Institute tier levels. So these tiers essentially start with N, N plus one, and finally two N plus one. Now, when we look at data centers, the only certainty is uncertainty. So whether you're dealing with powerful storms to unexpected power outages, you will never know what life is gonna throw at you or your data center's way. That's why the redundant systems are the data center's best friend when the unexpected happens. Redundancy refers to a system design where a component is duplicated so that in the event of a component failure, IT equipment is not impacted. For example, having a redundant power in case there's a power outage is, is a common example. The main goal of redundancy is to ensure zero downtime, even in worst case scenarios. So let's take a quick look at what is N. N equals the amount of capacity required to power or cool the data center facility at full IT load. A design of N means that the facility was designed only to account for the facility at full load and zero redundancy has been added. If the facility is at full load and there is a component failure or required maintenance, mission critical application would suffer immediately. N is considered the same as non-redundant. N plus one or N plus X data center architectures allow for more redundancy. If N equals the amount needed to run the data center facility, N plus one provides minimum reliability by adding a component to support a single failure or requirement of that component. Design standards typically call for one extra unit for every four needed. So therefore, if you have say eight UPS units, then you should have at least 10 total UPS units. So let's take a numerical example, a data center total load being one megawatt, each UPS platform of about 250 kilowatts. So therefore we would need four UPS systems of 250 kilowatts to give us one megawatt. N plus one therefore would mean one extra UPS, which would increase the UPS install capacity to 1.25 megawatt, which basically means that if one UPS is in maintenance mode, we can ensure that the data center can deliver one megawatt of UPS power. In this example, we only are using UPS as a, a simple case, but this model is applicable for the generator as well as a cooling infrastructure. Uh, 2N essentially refers to a fully redundant mirrored system with two independent power distribution systems. They are not connected in any way and are not dependent on each other, which means that even if one power source has an interruption or a loss, the other one would still supply power and accommodate full load, thereby eliminating any potential downtime 
from the loss of one side or one leg of the system. Similarly, there's more exotic architectures such as 3n by 2, 4n by 3, 5n by 4, which are technically possible but may be less reliable than a basic architecture because such an elaborate architecture of uh, 3n by 2, 4n by 3, 5n by 4 has so many more components that they can fail and have several load balancing points that need to be managed at the same time. So now that we've looked at our data center fundamentals, let's get into design and operate and the concept of going from design to operate using the ETAP digital twin. When we're dealing with uh, consultants and end users who are designing the data center, the engineering teams who are responsible for analyzing, documenting, and constructing the data center, and finally the maintenance and the operations teams that are responsible for operating and maintaining the data center, they are all working typically in silos. They all deal with different tools at different stages of the construction and design of the data center. And by moving from feasibility planning to schematics to the deliverables, sharing the same data across the entire life cycle of the electrical system has a positive impact versus siloed information that actually has a negative impact. The negative impact of having a non-unified life cycle results in errors and omissions as you're transferring data from one design phase to another. It requires rework, especially you have to re-enter the information again, and that results in lost time and of course increased cost, especially if there's a design change to be made during the construction phase where it requires you to go back to the drawing board, as we say, and redo some of the assessments again. So having a unified life cycle can mitigate and reduce this loss time and lower the cost in case there's any need to reiterate or rework any aspect of the electrical system life cycle. The integrated model driven approach by ETAB allows this to happen where we combine the digital twin model with network model analysis, intelligent visualization, and then we later on combine from an operations perspective with real-time operating data as well as historical data. Going from design to operation using a centralized digital twin allows us to essentially design the system with automation knowledge where we can conceptualize with accurate device characteristics such as PV, energy storage, wind, fuel cells and other capabilities and that gives us a conservative saving of 5% by including these accurate device characteristics during the conceptualizing phase itself. We can analyze the system with renewables and microgrid controllers and further optimize the design. And this is done by right sizing the components based on the behavior of the microgrid controllers. We can then operate the system with design knowledge. So that helps us do a better job at commissioning the system. And we can validate what's going to happen when we energize certain components as we go through certain uh, switch plans, and that helps us avoid costly disruptions. We can then continue on and automate with the design model characteristics for more optimal control, as well as a platform for operator training. And then if you add on optimization capabilities, such as acid condition monitoring and failure analysis, then we can also utilize ETAP to automate and manage optimal maintenance practices. So the ETAP digital twin as it's applied across the entire life cycle results in a conservative estimated savings of about 20%. ETAP completes your end-to-end -end journey by essentially allowing us to take this digital twin in the as designed state, which majority of you may have used ETAP in this stage. You can then take ETAP, connect it to another ETAP, which is software in the loop, and you can have a, as predicted design model. You can then take that model, combine it with some real-time data during the handover commissioning stage and you can get an as-trained model. The as-trained model continues to get better and better as we get into full-scale operations and that acts as a very effective operator training simulator. Finally, the real-time solutions allow us to take the digital twin in the as-operated state and then we can use that to forecast optimize, predict, 
recover as well as investigate whenever there is any outage or issues in the system. So ETAB again lets you go from detailed engineering to factory acceptance, handover commissioning and into operations on the same platform. And all of this is possible along with the quality assurance that ETAP provides. ETAP essentially has a nuclear grade or high impact software that allows us to comply with 10 CFR 50 Appendix B and CFR Part 21 amongst other standards. And that applies to our interface, the technical content, libraries, installation, as well as uh, training. So let's take a look at smart data center solutions from design all the way to operation side. We may, not, we may not have time to go through every single piece of capability, but my goal is to essentially show you highlights of some of the capabilities that ETAP has to offer going all the way from design to operate. But before we do that, let's take a look at some of the design challenges. What are the data center designers and owner and operators asking for? They're asking for a tool or a software that can help them design a data center that is fast to build and deploy it has the capabilities to track and cycle changes back to a master working file so that everybody is essentially using the same common model. And the biggest challenge in doing that is managing and using revisions in an effective manner and the user friendliness of how the design and change is being presented back. So it's very critical that the software be able to handle the many different possibilities and different design changes that ultimately give a data center owner or operator a reference design. It should have the ability for the electrical design engineers to access uh, all the other relevant project and vendor information that affects their design at the touch of a button. It should be able to work within BIM or building information models or 3D models such as AutoCAD Revit to ensure that all the project design engineers are working off the same script and it should ensure that the design works with the entire facility so that you don't have to come back and make costly design changes in the construction phase. All the configurations must be considered to completely predict the operation and identify any issues or shortcomings in the power system. And as we discuss different redundancy options, that converts into multiple configurations that must be analyzed. The design should be deployable anywhere in the world with little change. So therefore the design should include all the intricacies of all the local regulation and the software should be able to adapt to that. And it should include the uh, a design or it should be able to handle a design that is uh, flexible, resilient, has high density, redundant, but cost effective at the same time. So it essentially should allow for proactive uh, analysis capabilities as well as situational awareness of the electrical system. And again, we'll discuss these in a little bit. The ETAP data center solution includes design and operate capabilities tied through the multi-dimensional digital twin platform, including network model management and various power system analysis. And then we leverage ETAP SCADA, allowing us to enable many different types of electrical calculations that utilize the operational as well as historical data for situational awareness, fault location, root cause and effect analysis, what if predictive simulation, and many more. So let's take a look at this journey end to end in a little bit more detail. The consultants or the end users can enter data into ETAP either manually or use AutoCAD, Revit, Excel, or any other format to generate the ETAP single line diagram. And this is done through the data X import or manual processes. You can then utilize NetPM and the ETAP app to enrich this model by collaborating with owners, EPCs, and other consultants, allowing for faster project delivery, and then use that model for design, analysis, as well as dimensioning of basic equipment of the electrical system. Expand the usage into safety, such as arc flash, earthing, grounding, and selectivity. Uh, enable some more complex calculations such as DC, battery sizing, power quality, and renewable integration. And then finally, capture all the design and setting changes in, made during the rule books or made during creation of the rule books and make them available not just for that one design, but across the entire enterprise for other types of designs that are made by the same company. 
And then you can export all of these deliverables again into AutoCAD, Word, Excel, or other formats. This is the design and planning phase. We can then take the digital twin for the data center blueprint and then connect it with various data center field equipment using ETAP ICE, which is the edge controller that pushes real-time data into the digital twin and allows us to have real-time connectivity along with cybersecurity and other uh, requirements of the corporate IT infrastructure, enabling operations such as mall-based SCADA and integration with other third-party SCADA, PSMS functionalities such as what-if analysis, predictive simulation, and forensics, optimization such as microgrid controls, power quality, and switch plan analysis, as well as fault location, asset performance, such as uh, eProtect and uh, situational intelligence, and then help you develop training and competency through ETAP OTS, switching sequence management, and work order management. So these are the enabling applications for design and planning, real-time connections, as well as operation and maintenance. And then we, of course, connect with the enterprise through web HMIs, connecting to the corporate network by sharing data, as well as share data within other data center infrastructure management systems. Very quickly, starting with the multi-dimensional digital twin platform, it allows us to build the data revisions, configurations, as well as the graphical visualization within a data center single line diagram. To illustrate the multi-dimensional database, very quickly, we can take an example here, which is the ETAP data center that we just built just for today's session. And in this particular single line diagram, we have two utility incomers going to multiple switch gears that have the UPS housed within them. You can double click on the composite network and see the details inside along with the uh, HVAC units. And then we have uh, PDUs where the servers are essentially connected through uh, multiple racks. And then some critical loads that have dual power supply, fully redundant at all times, getting supply from the switchboard A or switchboard B depending upon uh, which one's available. And this particular uh, system, we can easily make a copy of the one line diagram. And then what that allows us to do is enable one diagram to run in load flow mode, while we can have another diagram running in a completely different load flow mode. And here we can set up a case where we're running the utility in a completely uh, uh, islanded manner, at least one of the utilities is fully islanded. And then we can see what happens in terms of the flow from the diesel generators here versus the power flow from the utility over here and then compare these two cases at the same time. So having different configurations and different presentations combined together allow us to create one unique scenario. And then we can combine that with multiple uh, revisions where we can simply see the effect of perhaps uh, making one change in the electrical system could be an expansion such that uh, we are adding a brand new uh, renewable energy source in this particular network. So we can go ahead and add our uh, PV system. Uh, go ahead and select uh, the PV panel from the library. And then once we select the PV panel from the library, we can set up the number of panels in series, the number of panel in uh, parallel, and then also go ahead and define the inverter configuration. In this case, the inverter would be uh, set up to be about uh, 50 kilowatt with uh, about uh, 400 volts. And we can continue on with our uh, calculation. So if you go ahead and run uh, load flow, in this case, we can see that we have 38 amps coming from this panel. However, this is my base or as built system. So in this particular network, I can simply set the state to be future. Uh, that uh, allows me to then set this uh, component out of service. And then when we get into a future situation, such as uh, the following year or uh, a different point in time, we can say that this is actually new and it's in service. And we can now see the flow in the future state or future revision or we can go back to our base case and see the power flow uh, in that case, which remains uh, unaffected. The ETAB Unified Digital Twin, in summary, allows us to import data through data exchange methods, collaborate and share data through uh, cloud NetPM as well as the mobile app, generate deliverables, 
perform various an analytics, connect with real-time data, and gives you various solutions for design as well as operations. If you look at the data exchange solutions very quickly, especially uh, import from AutoCAD, you can quickly go to uh, ETAP, choose the AutoCAD file of your choice, type in a command DWG to ETAP. ETAP automatically discovers AutoCAD, identifies the blocks, and then based on the mapping, you can begin importing the single line diagram directly into ETAP and get the one line diagram as best as possible from AutoCAD directly to ETAP without actually having to rebuild the one line diagram again. So this streamlines your work and enhances productivity. You can also interface ETAP with uh, Revit and validate the, the BIM design along with ETAP. So ETAP then connects automatically to Revit, discovers it. Once it discovers the Revit files, it essentially creates a, a mapping file for you that allows you to map one attribute of ETAP to another attribute. You can run studies within ETAP, generate the load flow short circuit results, and then export those results back into Revit so that you can have a com consolidated deliverable of the 2D, 3D, as well as the power system analysis studies for the data center design. And finally, if you're using any legacy software, ETAP is the industry standard for data center design and operations. And there are many reasons why you would switch over to ETAP and start using ETAP, but predominantly you would avoid all the hidden costs associated with having legacy software where you're not getting adequate maintenance and support, where compliances are lacking, there is security concerns, inadequate analysis modules resulting in lost opportunities, and then the software tool that you're using doesn't have an upgrade path, not allowing you to have that agility and efficiency that you need as a design firm or an end user. Now that we know what the solution contains, let's take a look at what the journey looks like for this multi-dimensional model. The model itself, as we saw, includes presentations, configurations, data revisions, and also can include time series data. That model is then shared with many users or colleagues across the world to shorten the project delivery time increase the design quality by engaging the subject matter experts from various offices and improves productivity and helps you optimize the project resources. ETAP has a user-friendly interface that allows us to quickly drag, drop, and build the single line diagram as we saw earlier. And then you can also, for brownfield sites, go out to the field, collect the data inside the ETAP app that allows you to leverage the single line diagram directly within the app itself modify the data and synchronize that back with the ETAP on your desktop, allowing you to save time and get the right data at the design stage, very early design stage, especially when you're doing a brownfield system expansion. And that ETAP app is available in uh, iOS, Windows, as well as Android uh, flavors. You can also leverage ETAP auto layout, especially if you're importing data from Excel or other legacy software where the layout is not great but can be improved dramatically by the ETAP auto build uh, rule books. And you can also leverage load allocation for model validation purposes, where you can bring in data recorded out in the field, play it back through the model, and then compare the uh, metered value versus the load flow value and have some sense of model validation done, especially for brownfield sites. And you can do this for LV, MV, as well as HV networks in a data center across AC, DC, as well as unbalanced systems, allowing you to model the full data center picture within the same uh, electrical model. You can then combine the rule books and engineering libraries to start doing basic calculations, such as uh, load flow and short circuit. And once again, in our uh, fictitious data center here, we can uh, switch over to load flow, run a load flow calculation. Instead of uh, amps, we can switch over and see uh, kilowatt and kvar and uh, very quickly pick uh, any particular configuration that we would like as long as you have auto run on ETAP goes ahead and runs the calculations uh, for you automatically and you can easily com compare or combine different configurations to see different results or you can simply uh, turn on the wizard toolbar and pick uh, a scenario of your choice so here we can go ahead and run our short circuit case 
for uh, normal condition and we can see that it's 112 kiloamps under normal condition and then when we are running with one grid only we can see it's actually 117 kiloamps uh, on this bus versus 24 and once again you can at any time switch back and compare the the results and we can see that as expected we we don't see 112 kiloamps with one grid down we actually see an increase in fault level duty with one grid down and that makes you question and try to understand that the data center networks are quite complex and they can create multiple different paths from many different places because of the redundancy in the system design. So it's very important to have these scenarios defined that may not be as intuitive as you think they may be, especially in this case where we have one uh, grid with a higher fault duty versus two grids that seem to have a little bit of a lower fault duty in the system. And predominantly this is because the tie breakers between the systems on the left and right hand side are actually open versus closed. Once we're done with load flow and short circuit, it's time to move on to protection and selectivity. And again, here ETAP makes it quite easy and straightforward for us to do our analysis quick and easy. We can simply select our entire system model. And the first thing that we can do is a device design assessment. What we want to find out is, have we picked every single component from our library or not? And here we can very clearly see that there are a number of components, including current transformers, and voltage transformers that have not been appropriately modeled within the software. They're included but not appropriately modeled. So we can simply click on a component to find where it is or double click on the device so we can go into the editor, pick a device from the library such as this particular component right here, click OK and then you can see circuit breaker 28 is now automatically removed from the list. And you can similarly proceed on to the next breaker, which is circuit breaker number 14. Uh, go ahead and pick this one from the, the library as well, uh, which could be a completely different uh, vendor. And once that device is picked from the, the vendor library again, you can see circuit breaker 14 has been removed. So this device design assessment provides a very effective method of quickly finding the missing devices from the model and allowing you to uh, include them directly into the library. Next step would be simply to select the entire diagram, run uh, auto star or star auto evaluation that automatically generates all the time current curves necessary, does the checking against the rule books that would normally take uh, days or weeks to do and then summarizes all the information into a nice crisp and clear uh, analysis viewer. So we can see all the general issues that I have within the, the model that I need to resolve. And then I can go into some specific ones, such as uh, load protection, motor protection, coordination, and we can also include uh, arc flash as well. Let's quickly look at motor protection and expand our time current curve here. So you can see that we have some issues with the trip curve crossing the starting time right here. And we can simply select the curve uh, directly from this location, move it, and then the program automatically completes the assessment. So you can see that now we're just left with warnings and there are no errors or alerts in the system, just purely information and everything else is green for this particular motor protection. Similarly, we can move on to AC and DC uh, arc flash. And once again, the, the program allows us to quickly go into arc flash analysis mode you can select the components that you want to perform the uh, arc flash assessment and then with one click of a button the, the program essentially allows us to run the arc flash calculation on one or more than one location at the same time and then at any point in time you can combine that with any of these uh, configurations or scenarios within the electrical system and then directly we can see the the results on the uh, one line uh, diagram you can also apply a, a sequence of uh, operation uh, arc flash and what that does for us is it applies an arc fault in a very specific location and then based on that particular location the program can actually calculate and let you know what the um, incident energy in the network is going to be so we can see all our devices uh, flashing and gives us an idea which devices are going to trip and the same information you can actually observe 
through the R flash analyzer that allows us to uh, not only look at one particular scenario but combine multiple scenarios into one uh, tabular uh, fashion. We can also include or perform cable system analysis and in order to perform the cable system analysis we can switch simply switch over to uh, our underground raceway uh, system and within the underground raceway system we can quickly build the uh, raceway uh, inside the, the duct bank and this is possible especially if the data center happens to be in, in an urban or dense environment where a lot of the conductors are uh, underground within the, the, the network and then you can simply run the uh, uh, temperature calculation or temperature assessment based on the power flow uh, results and the location of the conductors and the resistivity, soil thermal resistivity in this case and look at the temperature in uh, every single conductor. You can also perform a transient temperature calculation which allows uh, the program to vary the temperature as function of time and you can also for the same conductor observe the cable magnetic field uh, evaluation uh, at the same time. So you can uh, uh, quickly uh, go to uh, unbalanced uh, power flow and inside unbalanced power flow you can uh, ensure that you have the cable load and opacity uh, values checked so that you're updating these values. Uh, go back to your underground raceway system, open the cable magnetic field uh, uh, calculation and we can uh, go ahead and uh, simply run the cable uh, temperature uh, calculation in, in this case open up the magnetic field uh, calculator again and now we can observe that we have our underground raceway system that corresponds to uh, the raceway that we have back here and then this is the magnetic field intensity uh, at uh, different depths because of this particular raceway and then we can go into our safety limits plot those limits directly onto this chart and then make sure that we are within the uh, medical public and worker safety limits based on various different standards. So the cable system not only allows you to uh, perform the ther thermal analysis or mechanical cable pulling analysis but it can also allow you to perform the magnetic field calc. You can also perform substation ground grid design, dimensioning of cables, transformers and then use the study wizards and analyzers to quickly design with confidence. Advanced Design solutions include uh, time series power flow, uh, motor starting calculation where you can simply go to the diagram, uh, select a uh, air conditioning unit that you probably want to start. Go ahead and actually start it in the actual system based on uh, one particular uh, configuration. You can then switch over to uh, another configuration. Uh, let's say we give it a, a, another name here uh, called uh, normal so that we can analyze and see what happens when the grid is connected in a normal condition and we're actually uh, starting or accelerating the motor in, in the system. And then here we can observe as we accelerate uh, the machine in the system, we, we can see how the utility power is, is changing as this motor is starting uh, within the network. The motor actually happens to be uh, connected right right here so you can see the acceleration uh, current for this particular uh, motor which is motor one and then the same information can be observed through the motor starting plots so we can select motor one and quickly see all the uh, mechanical electrical as well as the speed information associated with this uh, machine that we are starting up uh, and using the plot analyzer once again we can compare uh, multiple conditions how the motor starting is going to be impacted in order to use the plot analyzer, we can simply uh, switch to another configuration where we just want one grid uh, connection, uh, rerun the, the calculation with a different output report name, and then we can simply open up the uh, motor starting analyzer, select our two output reports, select motor one, and we want to, for example, just look at the slip and the uh, current in this case. So then we can essentially allow the, you, the, the program to plot the uh, results for two grid connection case and one grid connection case uh, both uh, at the same time. And in this example we can see 
we have uh, motor one and uh, with two grids and motor with uh, only one grid connected and you can just simply turn off the series on or off just to uh, compare between these and also observe the, the line current to see how the line current is changing and you can use various tools in the plot analyzer to uh, observe uh, the values uh, and compare the differences between these two um, cases. When we're done with motor starting, we can also perform power quality analysis. And once again, ETAP allows you to quickly just switch over to power quality analysis mode. And here it's particularly important because we are simulating all kinds of power quality uh, devices such as the servers themselves, the SMPS, uh, any power quality issues that are coming from the grid itself, the, the background noise, and any power quality issues that are coming from the PV uh, inverters as well as the energy storage inverters in the system. You can simply run the harmonic uh, calculation and then based on the distortion uh, observed in the system you can see the alerts that are generated, how the individual harmonic distortions and in one case how the total harmonic distortion is being exceeded and these are all uh, managed and controlled uh, using the uh, rule books where you can simply go inside the harmonic rule book and pick the uh, rule of your choice such as IEEE 519, ENA as well as uh, IEC standards or you can go ahead and add your own rule book in order to do a comparison or assessment. And at, uh, at a glance you can see what the total harmonic distortion is uh, in the network and then you can quickly navigate through the slider and see what the distortion is on each particular harmonic order. The same information can also be observed through um, the uh, uh, plot analyzer as well as the plot uh, manager and we can uh, see in this case for our uh, point of uh, common uh, coupling buses as well as uh, our distribution boards uh, what the power quality um, looks like so we can actually combine uh, these plots together uh, and we can see uh, the incoming uh, baselines as well as the uh, spectrum uh, for this particular uh, network and you can uh, easily turn off uh, again one of these uh, components you can see the baseline which is the perfect sine wave and the distorted waveform uh, behind it and then quickly make your assessment for harmonics or power quality and of course one of the mitigation techniques we can um, uh, deploy as needed is the uh, harmonic filtering. Uh, once we're done with power quality we can also perform contingency analysis as well as reliability studies. Reliability studies are particularly important because they are at the heart of uh, providing or analyzing or assessing the data center availability time. So by simply plugging in the appropriate data you can uh, go into uh, the ETAP reliability module and observe the failure rates in terms of outage durations in hours or hours per year and again for the tier 4 data centers the expectation is the outage is probably less than or equal to 25 minutes a year but if it's a non-redundant tier 1 data center the outage duration could be more than 50 uh, hours uh, per year and the reliability module is helping you gauge under different conditions what the outage rates are going to be and then summarize them for um, the uh, customer or for your data center uh, design. So in this case we can see that the outage duration on this particular component is 48 hours that may result in the PDU failures uh, of approximately the, the same time frame. Um, and this is uh, once again uh, plugged in using either typical typical IEEE data or based on actual uh, vendor information that you may have uh, associated with the reference design that you're using. Uh, once we're done with the reliability calculations, alternatively, optionally, you can also perform transient stability, especially if you have a complex uh, switchover or cutover of uh, generators in the system. And using the live plot charts, we can allow you to observe the uh, millisecond behavior of various emergency diesel generators as they're coming online and synchronizing with the UPS uh, running in the system. You can also get into the electromagnetics and uh, co-simulation, especially if you have a failure in the system uh, that was not previously analyzed, could not be understood, maybe a transient overvoltage condition, insulation failure, or any insulation coordination problem. You can 
combine ETAP EMT with ETAP simulation to analyze electromagnetic domain in the same software uh, along with the millisecond uh, time frame analysis as well. So we give you that flexibility of doing electromagnetics as well as the RMS simulation uh, within the same tool. The other advantage of ETAP is you can also include controllers within the model itself. So here we can see that uh, I have a load curve uh, for my cable that's feeding the grid and I have a profile for my uh, energy uh, storage system. So in, in this particular case, I'm going ahead and uh, running my simulation in the baseline so I can observe uh, as the simulation is running, I can see how the, the calculated values are tracking over time. So this is exactly the same condition as I ran previously. So I expect the, the load is kept at two megawatt and then when the energy storage is consumed, the load curve resumes and reaches a peak value of about eight megawatt. Uh, however, for the same microgrid controller that I have uh, deployed here, I can uh, switch over to a revision where I'm upgrading the battery or adding new energy storage into the system and then rerunning the simulation again. So in this case, we can uh, once again observe that the, the energy storage profile uh, remains fairly similar uh, however, when we look at the, the load curve, because I have a larger battery, I can extend this two megawatt uh, clipping uh, that I'm doing through the microgrid controller, limiting the uh, import to two megawatt a little bit further. And then once the energy storage runs out, I can see the load curve spikes again. So I can then continue extending the energy storage requirements such that I never reach this peak of uh, uh, eight uh, megawatt and I'm always limited to a peak of about two megawatts and right size that energy storage um, device. Uh, when we get to uh, commissioning, uh, we essentially are able to now take this uh, electrical system model and connect it with either the real-time data directly or with another ETAP itself and leverage state estimation uh, along with software in the loop and many other pieces of technologies. So let's take a quick look at all of them uh, in, one, uh, in one glance. So this same electrical model that I have here, I'm gonna go ahead and transition it over to the online system. And when we are in the online system, we are essentially observing uh, many different uh, additional items. It's the same electrical model. I can go ahead and double click on a particular component, but you'll notice that it brings up a completely different control editor because from ETAP we are also a SCADA system allowing you to monitor and control various components. However, certain uh, devices such as uh, multimeters or cables in the system where we're not really controlling them, you can double click on those components and based on your access level, you can observe the properties that went into that particular cable during the design stage. Now that we've seen that our model is connected to real-time data, what can we do with it? The first thing that we would do with it is uh, state estimation. So let's take a quick look at that. State estimation essentially is shown in this red color while the metering values are shown in the green color. If you go back to our data center system, we can see that for various uh, PDUs in the system, we can see the, the results in uh, real and reactive power based on the meter measurements. And as we go further down into the PDUs and observe what is happening at the edge uh, or the servers themselves, we can see that we still have estimation of the flows. We have estimation of the voltages along with the breaker topology that's being used to determine what the complete system picture looks like. So state estimation essentially is giving us not only the estimation of the state of the system, but also the load distribution. And this allows us to generate pseudo telemetry. And if we have components such as this transformer, uh, where we are computing the MVA flow through this asset, we can then also generate alarms based on those pseudo measurements. So for example, if you have LV transformers that are not being metered or the metered values are not being brought back to the SCADA, no problem. ETAP can use the model, estimate the flows and generate alarms if you are, plan if you are going to overload that particular piece of asset, in this case, a transformer, a breaker, bus bar, or any other uh, component that might exist in the system. Let's take a quick look at predictive analysis using power flow. 
I can quickly switch over to system simulator and perform a predictive simulation. In order to perform predictive simulation, I need to capture the state of the system the way it's being operated at this state in time. Let's say for the sake of uh, our quick example for our data center, uh, this particular uh, breaker happens to be uh, open. And if this breaker is uh, open in the network, we would see a corresponding change in the flow within this uh, uh, particular data center project that we have. If you go ahead and completely de-energize the switch gear B, that is the way the system is operating right now. So when we go ahead into our system simulator and we are able to get online data for our data center, we can observe right here in the switch gear uh, area, as soon as we get online data, uh, that particular piece of component uh, is de-energized because those two breakers are actually open in the system. Now I can go ahead and do a uh, load flow in the system which has already been run and then do a, a predictive simulation. Uh, what will happen if I was to close this breaker in the network or open a particular breaker in the system? If I was to open this breaker in the system, uh, I can see the impact on my power flows. If I was to go ahead and uh, close this breaker in the system, I can uh, also observe a uh, corresponding change uh, or a power flow change within the, the network. And we can go ahead and close these two breakers in and see what happens if I have this source being energized from here versus the uh, breaker that's closed from here and see the impact of that in the system. Uh, similarly, you can go ahead and do other uh, what-if cases and you, we know that if we open this particular breaker here, we lose the entire infrastructure because this breaker is still uh, open. So you can do a predictive simulation with a what-if without actually taking an action in the system and interact with that electrical system model so that you have a better risk awareness before you make any operational changes or commissioning changes within the, the system. Similar to predictive simulation is software in the loop. I'm actually running software in the loop right now. I have two ETAPs uh, at this point in time. One is simulating the way the system is actually going to behave and the other one is the one that I'm actually interacting with. You do not see the one that is simulating the system in the background. However, what you are seeing is the HMI or the one line diagram that I as an operator am interacting with. Now, one of the things that we can do within uh, ETAP as I'm interacting with this particular system is what would happen if this particular switch was open. If this particular switch was uh, uh, open, we can simply uh, trip it offline and we will observe this air conditioning unit uh, shutting down. And if I was to go ahead and close this particular switch back in, we expect this air conditioning unit to start up. So you can see that there's uh, changes in real reactive power that correspond to an inrush in the system and then we get to a bit of a steady state value where this uh, air conditioning unit is actually operating now in a steady state manner. So we're not only doing a steady state calculation, we're actually doing a full dynamic simulation in the background in RMS domain, providing that feedback to the operator, uh, letting them know during commissioning stage operator training stage or actual operations, how the system is actually going to behave and generating alarms against that. Very quickly, we can also observe a sequ sequence of events playback, which is uh, leveraging, again, the electrical uh, single line diagram, uh, the digital twin, uh, except now we can switch over to another view, which is the, the, the playback view. And when we are in playback mode, we essentially have access to the ETAP historian. The ETAP historian allows us to pick uh, any action that we have uh, taken in the in the system. Let's say uh, something that we may, we may have done uh, a few seconds ago, and we can click OK and load that snapshot directly into the single line diagram. What's powerful about this is you don't have to worry about connecting the data to the model. ETAP does that for you, and we can see that at 1537, these two breakers were open. And that's exactly what I was doing when I was showing you the predictive simulation piece. Now we can continue playing the data forward, in reverse, go through different uh, uh, events in the system, and then see how did the system change? At what point was there some kind of failure in the system 
that we want to analyze. And in this particular case, we can see that when these two breakers are open, this breaker was actually red. It was actually overloaded in the system. That could have resulted in a failure or a trip of this breaker. And that event can be analyzed further uh, in terms of a forensic analysis or root cause and effect analysis. One of the other things that we can do uh, in terms of uh, the commissioning is uh, eProtect. Though eProtect is not a, itself a commissioning tool, it, but it acts as a commissioning tool as well as an operation solution. Uh, eProtect is a centralized protection and asset management system that allows you to seamlessly synchronize data between the physical relay and ETAP star. And it automatically processes the relay setting files, making it easy for us to connect to any type of relay within your infrastructure, get the as found relay settings, pass them to the protection software so you can do your optimization of the settings, especially once the system has been commissioned or there's some issues in commissioning where certain settings need to be changed. They're not quite optimal. They can be changed within the ETAP software and then pushed back into the eProtect database and finally into the relay itself. And eProtect also acts as the foundation for fault waveform retrieval as well as fault location which we'll see in a little bit and all of this is uh, visualized through eProtect web clients. The eProtect web client allows us to not only visualize the the relay face plates where you can observe what's going on with a particular uh, relay in in the system directly on on the web uh, along with its uh, measurement values breaker statuses and so on but the eProtect side allows us to explore the relay settings further. So I can actually drill down, see and observe at an organization level or based on a voltage level, how my relays and other protected devices are organized. And for each relay, I can observe what the settings are as well as uh, send these settings to ETAB. Once the settings are sent to ETAB, we can also bring settings back from ETAP and then send them to the device or you can download uh, the settings from the device into a setting file and manually move a setting file back and forth between the device based on your cybersecurity preference. You can also click on the versions and you can see the as designed and as found versions which may be different from each other uh, and you can also uh, do the same with uh, other um, uh, relay types uh, such as uh, GE Multilin, you can uh, also uh, get data from ABB uh, as well as uh, Schweitzer uh, relays and at any point in time once again you can see the versioning information as well as the, the setting files. You can also go to the settings uh, history and see for a particular device across a period of time how the settings have been changed and you can also go to the um, uh, panel layout interact with the panel and then also go to the relay health and see more detail in terms of the the relay protection statuses maintenance dates last tested dates and so on and so forth in fact etap is a complete asset management system where you can go to all the assets in the system uh, and observe uh, for each particular device when it was last maintained along with its uh, asset details and other particular information that you may want to try to uh, organize and maintain. So you can actually classify the assets based on uh, transformers, breakers, uh, based on events, based on calendar for maintenance, as well as uh, switch order management that allows you to um, uh, go ahead and take various maintenance actions within the, the infrastructure. The switch order management allows you to, of course, uh, create requests for maintenance changes review various uh, crew information and then observe various network changes that have already been made in the system and then of course export reports or deliverables that are necessary for the crew and you can also manage or search for switch orders that have been previously uh, analyzed or organized as well now that we've looked at some of our commissioning tools let's see what operation challenges does etap solve etap essentially helps you understand the real-time state of the electrical distribution network and quickly notifies you when there's a critical power system event. So that is a very crucial function that ETAP does provide. But that's not enough for a lot of customers. 
the electrical distribution network is constantly changing because of changing loads. You're constantly adding servers, removing servers, moving them around. There could be renewable energy coming in, different switch plans that are being uh, organized, and equipment being taken down for maintenance. So you need to understand the impact of these changes before they happen. So ETAP essentially lets you examine the consequence of these switching sequences based on load flow, relay coordination, short circuit, arc flash, power quality, and it allows you to conduct these what if simulations to determine the uh, capacity management and find the best source to provide power to the uh, critical devices at all times. Now we've looked at predictive simulation, we've looked at the operator training simulator, but ETAP also uses situational intelligence to make the operation challenges a whole lot smoother and easier. This is the heart of the ETAP situational intelligence. You can see all the scenarios that I have created in the past that are being continuously analyzed against the operational state of the system. You don't have to actually run the scenarios, ETAB runs these scenarios for you on a regular basis and lets you know if any particular scenario such as PDU-5B trip is going to cause a severe effect or impact in the system. Now I know that this, that particular PDU-5B has a critical problem associated with it. I have to be very careful when I'm dealing or working around this PDU, any change I'm making around this PDU because there are potential overloads likely and this is the detail of the overload in case PDU-5 trips. For any other trip in the system, such as trip of a utility, trip of a UPS, I'm protected. I don't need to worry about it except for this particular uh, condition in the system. And then the program is automatically executing uh, these scenarios, which we can uh, observe through um, our uh, scenario settings uh, on, on a regular basis. Um, and I can quickly also filter based on uh, severity to find all the critical problems associated with this particular PDU-5 um, trip. We can quickly change the settings by going to the setting menu and you can see that we are analyzing these scenarios every four minutes but it could be set up to be analyzed uh, every time there's a change in the topology of the system versus just a pure uh, time-based function. And this situational intelligence based on different conditions, different scenarios, is leveraging the design scenarios. These scenarios were the ones that we had created in our design model. And we can observe that very quickly by going to that design model, uh, looking at the list of our uh, scenarios, and we can observe that trip of UPS A, B, utility, as well as the PDU 5B trip these are existing scenarios that I'm just simply leveraging from my design study. So it makes perfect sense to take these, put them with the real-time data, connect them with the real-time data, and let ETAP quickly analyze them for you on a continuous basis. Uh, ETAP therefore takes a system from a traditional SCADA that's unaware, reactive, and manual, and makes the system more proactive, does better real-time evaluation, and is able to do so through a digital twin foundation. So we're not only extending this to the ETAP software itself, but we're extending this capability to other SCADA as well at the same time. So if you're using a completely different SCADA system, you do not have to change your SCADA. You can still bolt on the ETAP capabilities to your existing SCADA, and I'll show you how that's done really quick. So I have a, a third-party SCADA, which is Schneider EcoStructure Power SCADA, and I have the exact same electrical system model as I had in ETAP, that I have exported over to the power SCADA operation. So now with this, I can essentially set up the system to be in a uh, normal condition. And in a normal condition, I can just simply reset the SCADA simulation environment uh, into a normal mode. And when we are in this normal mode, I can use this for operator training, commissioning, or simply risk aware operation or a validate before operate uh, action. I'm not actually taking the action from the SCADA, but I want to know what's going to happen before I take that action in the system. So we can go ahead and uh, set the system into normal operating mode where these breakers are closed. Uh, I have PDU-5B closed. And if this particular PDU was to uh, trip uh, in the system, 
if as a SCADA operator I was to do that, I can see that PDU 5A megawatt is exceeded. This breaker uh, has more power going through it because this breaker has been uh, tripped. So this is not the kind of action or operation I would like to do. Uh, and in fact, if we were to go ahead and close this PDU-5 again, we can observe that PDU-5A is 108 and then this also picks up uh, load in the system. If I was to go ahead and trip this particular breaker in, in, the, in the network, we can observe once again through simulation what is the impact of that breaker tripping, which doesn't have a huge or tremendous impact. However, if this tie breaker was uh, open uh, in the system, we can quickly observe that I would lose majority of this system and also have some power flow uh, going in a reverse direction, which is not a desirable behavior. So through uh, observations uh, before taking the action in the system in simulation environment, we can quickly understand the impact of making the change in the system before having made the change and avoiding a costly uh, mistake or error in, in the operation of the system. In fact, if we go to uh, our air conditioning unit that we had looked at previously, if this unit was uh, tripped offline, once again, we can leverage the power of ETAP dynamic simulation to uh, accelerate that air conditioning unit. You can see that inrush coming in of reactive power and it quickly stabilizes to a running condition. So once again, the dynamic power of ETAP is being leveraged by not just ETAP SCADA, but can be leveraged by third-party SCADA such as the Schneider uh, PSO or EPO uh, offer. The other capabilities that we can leverage for data center is energy accounting. So ETAP has uh, user-defined reports that you can use for auditing the energy usage, especially for co-location data centers. And that helps you get into ISO 50001 EMS compliance. We can also generate KPIs or e using equations based on energy utilization as we solve the PUE or DCIE calculations, measure the baseline and track the effectiveness of ener any energy saving scheme that you're deploying, especially for ISO 50001 compliance and then generate energy cost reports uh, that can drive best practices. So energy accounting and tracking is a very key function that's part of ETAP. And then the other thing that we can leverage within ETAP is the advanced fault analysis or the fault location system, which data center owners and operators spend a lot of time uh, trying to chase down exactly what happened in the electrical system. Was a fault within the system, outside the system? What did it look like? What kind of fault was it? Where did it happen? So all of these things can be answered very quickly by ETAP. Let's take a look at that in a few uh, minutes. Once again, we can go to uh, our ePROTECT view. And uh, besides connecting to the relay to get the relay settings, we're also connecting to the relay to pull in the waveforms. So you can quickly go to the uh, event list, uh, pick an event uh, or a waveform in the system, uh, load that event up, uh, add a chart uh, for that particular event, uh, add the signals that you are interested in uh, plotting. So I want to plot the uh, current for phase A, phase B, as well as phase C. Uh, you can add those uh, channels in along with uh, perhaps uh, voltages as well for phase A, B, uh, and, and C in the system. And once you're done uh, plotting this uh, information, uh, you can uh, click OK. And then we can observe what the, the chart uh, actually looks like. Uh, let's say if you want to uh, temporarily turn off uh, the voltages so we can see the currents a little bit better. So here we can observe what the, uh, the, the, the current actually looks like. And uh, we have other capabilities available to us, uh, such as uh, looking at the um, values, magnitudes, and so on and so forth. But the power of ETAP is it also allows us to uh, observe the fault location. So based on the event and the incident that we have picked up, we can quickly also get the sequence of events from the event file itself. And then based on the events, we can also observe the uh, fault distance, the percentage, and the algorithm that was used. And we use uh, sophisticated algorithms such as single end Takagi, reactance methods, as well as multi end sync methods especially for meshed systems like a data center, especially with tier three and tier four where you have uh, fully redundant systems, 
that call, uh, make a loop in the network uh, where we need to observe exactly where the fault is uh, located. And we can also look at the, the relay data that we are observing, including the voltages and the angles, and do a fault severity analysis as well. So the AFAS is a bolt-on to uh, ePROTECT and it leverages the power of the relays uh, wherever they may be located to uh, figure out the fault type itself as well as the fault location uh, without having you spend a lot of time trying to analyze this information especially when you're busy trying to get the data center up and running you can focus on that and leave the forensics uh, in the hands of ETAB uh, to make it easier and quicker for you to determine the root cause and effect. And finally, ETAP also includes a microgrid solution. The microgrid solution itself is a separate webinar. You're more than welcome to sign up and view the microgrid webinar, but the power of the microgrid controller within a data center environment is that it allows you to uh, model the controller logics within the data center environment, observe the effect of the renewable energy and the energy storage charge and discharge, do the open loop situational intelligence test as we've seen, manage the control validation via real-time analysis, and then deploy to the actual hardware. And once the microgrid controls are deployed to the hardware, you can let the microgrid control system or a hybrid controller manage the PV, wind, energy storage, and the data center loads along with the UPS and have a complete automated control of the data center. And then by adding that green energy component, you can improve the PUE and the DCIE KPIs and make it a more greener uh, platinum data center that uh, drives uh, better uh, tenants and better design and of course sustainability for the environment itself. So with that we come to the end of this webinar where we want to quickly uh, summarize the fact that ETAB data center solution is quite vast, has a lot of detail, we couldn't cover all of it in this webinar due to our time constraint. However, to summarize, the ETAP data center solution is a unification of the design and operation capability. It's expandable and it's complete. That solution gives you product and delivery speed, the ETAP quality and the compliances that we provide, third-party integration with SCADA as well as data exchange uh, capability with BIM and other drawing tools, planning and decision-making capability, data visibility and analytics over the web, safety and security, and in terms of uh, cybersecurity as well as our safety solutions. And we're hardware agnostic as well as software agnostic, so we can work with any vendor, being an independent software vendor ourselves. And then the capabilities and the solutions that we provide uh, include what-if analysis, energy tracking and forecasting, load growth planning at the system or rack level, intelligent microgrid control with battery, diesel, and energy storage, carbon neutrality planning with renewable energy integration, load preservation and outage management and you can also bring in business intelligence schematic visualization and dashboards along with geospatial information especially if you want to manage the data center uh, in a physical layout manner and combine all of these into one common or combined data center solution thank you very much for joining us for this webinar and we look forward to seeing you in our upcoming webinars and have a wonderful day or evening wherever you may be.